All right, so in this segment, we are going to cover how to do multiple linear regression using only Excel. As some of you might know, in Excel, we have a data analysis tool pack, which allows you to do a little bit of statistical analysis. So you don't need to invest in a tool like SAS and SPSS. That being said, it's very basic. And what I'm going to do in this video is to show you how to build a multiple linear regression model using only Excel. How to enable the data analysis tool pack on your Excel spreadsheet? Go to File. It's going to take a while, so computer. Yeah. Go to File, then press Options. In Options, click on Add-ins. Manage Excel Add-ins. Press Go. Analysis tool pack. If this is unclicked, click on this. Press OK. In the data option, on the extreme right hand side, you will see a button which says data analysis. If you click on data analysis, you will see all the uh, tests. So we've got ANOVA, we've got F-test, we've got P-test, correlation, you know, T-test for two sample, assuming equal, unequal variances, etc. And over here, you see the option for regression. And I'm going to show you how to do regression on this data set over here. So I'll explain this data set now. So this is a car sales data set, it's a training data set, it's got about 150 observations. So we've got details regarding the car, so each row is a particular car model. For each row, we've got the manufacturer, so we've got Cadillac, Chevrolet, BMW, etc. The specific model of the car, the sales figures, right? the price of the car, then we've got some information regarding the car, so we've got type. So type, if you see... It distinguishes between what seems to be like uh, SUVs versus non-SUVs. Then we've got the engine capacity or the engine size. So how many liters? 1.8 liter engine, 3.2 liter engine and so on. We've got the horsepower. We've got the statistics of the car chassis, things like wheelbase, weight, length, curb weight, fuel capacity and the mileage of the car. In this uh, regression model, what we're going to do is we're going to try and predict or try to fit a model of price as a function of all of these variables, right? So if I press or if I model price as a function of only one variable, that's simple linear regression. If I try to model price as a function of more than one variable, that's multiple linear regression. And you can do multiple linear regression using data analysis tool pack. Some, uh, it can be very handy to do some exploratory analysis. You don't have to rely on a, on a dedicated tool package uh, like a SAS or SPSS or R, you can simply do it in Excel. So click on Data Analysis Tool Pack, select Regression and the options over here. Press OK. Right over here, you'll see an option called Input Y Range, Input X Range. Right. So Y Range, you'll have to input the dependent variable or the variable which you want to model. Right. In this case, I want to fit a function for price. So I say price is the Dependent variable, I need to select all of it. So over here, input X range is the set of your independent variables which are going to explain the variance in price. Now, think about the tool pack, all of your independent variables need to be together so you can't have uh, any gaps between the independent variables. So, if you want to re rearrange your sheet so that all independent variables come one after the other, you may need to do that. So, I select from type till MPG or from column F to column N. Select all the rows. Now, as you see that I have selected the first row as well, I need to make sure that the labels option is clicked. In case I select from row two, I can ignore labels, but in the result, you would want to know which variable is what. So I click on labels over here. Confidence interval or the alpha and beta values, I let it be at 95%, which is the default for any regression output. If I want to do no constant regression, I can force the intercept to be at zero. I don't need to do that. Where do I want the results populated? Let it be in a new worksheet. You want it specifically in some uh, range in your like, current sheet, you can specify that. Or you want a new workbook, you can specify it. I want a new worksheet. Residuals, etc. I'll leave it for now. And let's see the result that we get. I press OK. And we get, so if you see it automatically opens a new tab on the same sheet and I get the results of my uh, multiple linear regression. For those of you who use SAS or SPSS, 
uh, you will see straight off that the result is very similar to what you would get on a dedicated statistical output. That's pretty neat. So I've got the uh, basic uh, you know results regarding the validity of my regression. I see the multiple R and R square. They're pretty high. So I'm getting an R square of 0 0.81 or roughly 80% of the variation can be explained by these variables. Adjusted R square is also very high. So I know there is no overfitting. Standard error is coming at 6.4. I get the ANOVA of the regression. I can check the p-value of the f stats. So it's coming in 3.2 raised to power. So I'll just change this format to become easier to read. I see 0.0. It's much lower than 0 0.05 cutoff that we get. Now this is my model over here. So I get the intercept at 44. And then I get the beta estimates or the slope against each of the variables over here. Standard error is given against them, the t-star and the p-value. So to check which variables are significant, we obviously need to look at the p-value of the variables. And I see, I'll make it easier to read. So almost all the variables are coming significant. I can see wheelbase and MPG or mileage, they actually do not impact the price because the p-value is much higher than the cutoff, i.e. these variables are insignificant. So if you can see, the coefficient is actually lower than the standard error. And in this case also, the coefficient is much lower than the standard error. error. So those variables are actually not impacting our price anymore much. And I can actually remove these variables and still again run it. So if I want to do some iteration, I can again go back, you know, I can go to data analysis tool, I can do it again. But how do I actually remove variables from the regression? So for example, if I go back here, input wiring is already there, input X range. I want to remove miles per gallon and I want to, the other variable which I want to remove is wheelbase, right? Problem is wheelbase is in between of the variables over here. So I cannot select two different sets of variables and that means I have to delete variables or I need to remove them. So let me remove wheelbase and put it in the end over here, right? So wheelbase and miles per gallon are the two variables which I want to remove in my next run. So here goes, I run it again, regression, right? Input X range, it's already there. Or input wiring, input X range. In this case, I take it from type, all the way till fuel capacity, I ignore the two variables. Everything is the same, press OK. I get my new results. So this was the older, uh, I, uh, the run I did, and this is the newest iteration. Again, I see the variables are, been reduced by two variables, but I can see that the R square has not changed. If you look at the previous R square, it was 0.81. It's still 0.81 in my latest uh, iteration. What it essentially is reaffirming the fact that removing those two variables did not impact my my regression at all. I see two more variables, fuel capacity, which is slightly higher than 0.05, and maybe width, which I can try and remove. But assuming, you know, the cutoff that we're taking for alpha is 0 0.10, I can let this be here. And these are the regression output, or the standard, uh, sorry, the estimates against each of the variables.